cord. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Say something, Cap. Yeah, I almost forgot to do it, Grandma. <laughs> time to figure it out. But what I was had, it? I had to rush Ginger back to the vet again today. Oh, oh no. With our poor baby. Yeah, she is not able to get food past her throat. And oh. so Monday, they're going to have to sedate her and scope her. And there's a big chance she won't wake up. Oh, right. You know, if it's God's time for her, it's God's time for her. But Exactly. And I kind of feel it is. I really do. Because she's been an angel for all these years for you. <laughs> we had a little talk in the car about her going up to see Jesus. And that's what we have to do. I had to do that with Copper when he passed away. I told him, if it's your time, buddy, go ahead and go to rest. Okay. So, like, you'll be back with your big brother, Jonah, and your daddy, and they'll be there waiting on you. Yep. <laughs> well, it was just like uh, the picture that I have on my phone that I've screenshotted a thousand times and shared of mm -hmm. Copper sitting with his head on my shoulder. Yes. Yeah. When he died, he died right beside my wife and I on uh, right outside our pickup. Mm. and he laid between us and because that was his spot was between us and he entered a rest peacefully I really wish they'd let me back in the procedure room so I could just hold her as she goes under yeah no kidding that would be such a good thing for you no I, Dr. Blessinger would probably let me do that so I would talk to him and see yeah because of knowing it might be the last time Mm -hmm. I I don't want her to go without me holding her. Yeah. She's such a beautiful little baby. <laughs> she is. Are you going to come up? Are you going to come say hi? Yeah, hi, Ginger. <laughs> hey, Ginger girl. What you doing? We, we love all our babies. Our fur babies, <laughs> our real babies, our grandbabies, our adult babies. We love them all. <laughs> And JC's in the house. God bless you, brother. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Hello, everybody. Hey. And we're talking about our pets here before we get started tonight. <clears throat> but we've had so many beloved animals in our life, our fur babies. And I wouldn't trade them for the world. I've got the okay. Cantankerous Church over here. I've got Smokey, and he's our rescue Pyrenees. And I, I'm grateful for them because they're great companions. JC's got his big dog, and <laughs> she lets everybody know she's there. <laughs> Always. Always. Uh, we were talking about it earlier where to Kaylin about how that one night we had a whole animal conversation in the middle of a Bible. <laughs> oh, when everybody's mercy. dogs went and barking at the same yeah. it's ginger wood. Smokey bark, JC's dog bark, Loki bark. <laughs> we cat meowed, jerk meowed. It was just like, hey, where everybody's having a conversation tonight. <laughs> no, let's try on top of the blanket, okay? She is trying to eat, and it just, it just won't go down. What? We do not, ma'am. Have you tried feeding? Yes, we've tried everything. Um, today she had another IV just to help get her a little bit. She's been also very dehydrated on top of everything. So. We're praying for another uh, person named Terry for a stroke, a mild stroke. Yes. I wanted everybody to, to know about that. I'm just, just an update on the prayer list. We're still keeping uh, J. Carr's daughter-in-law in prayer. We still want to keep her in prayer. Lisa and Gina, Sister Grace, she's having health issues. And Kaylin, you're going to get to hear it firsthand. <laughs> Kaylin, Riley, oh, Eddie, Joe, and all that. grandchildren, Grandma Wolf, and Pops, Mama Bear in prayer. <laughs> so this is something we do a lot of. <laughs> Phil, and that's uh, Brother Phil uh, Tangy. Sherry, who's home right now, Connie and Shyla. We're going to keep Dawn Kennedy, whether she likes it or not, in prayer. <laughs> I'm going to say it every week. It's a tradition. Yes. Naughty Suzu. And 
her babies and her family. Uh, definitely, we want to keep Leon in prayer because he was denied the transplant. We still want him to live long enough to see his great grandbaby born. Um, you did say, you did say, um, Grandpa Trujillo. Um, he he is home. Um, he's doing good. Everything went the way they planned. Um, his only complaint is he has the small costs. Yeah, that's from the tube. We'll take it. <laughs> Uh, we'll take that definitely. Uh, we want to keep Grandpa Trujillo in prayer for healing and kidney new healing. Yep. We uh, need some extra on Kaylin. We're definitely going to be overdosing Kaylin on prayer. <laughs> kidney, yes. her, her kidneys have started to fail. Yeah, oh. that's what we were talking about. Okay. We've got to keep Kaylin in prayer for that. Yes. Yeah, there's no doubt there and no questions on that. Today I had, I saw my psychiatrist and there's a couple of my meds that can screw with my kidneys. And like, um, we're pretty sure the new antidepressant that I got put on is been what's causing me to keep the two, the last two, two and a half weeks. Um, they cut my other anti, my main antidepressant in half. They raised up my secondary mood stabilizer from four and a half milligrams to six milligrams. And with my main mood stabilizer, which is my lithium, that I take 1,200 milligrams of a day. That's what's messing with over, over the course of the next month, I will no longer be on lithium. That's okay. what's destroying your kidneys. <clears throat> lithium will destroy the kidneys. Oh, especially in a high dose. Yeah, I take 1,200 milligrams a day. Right. Right That's a high dose. Yeah. yeah. So we also want to keep Nuts. Uh, his name is Pete. Uh, Nuts 319. He's a logger. He's recovering. Yeah. He's still in the hospital. Um, all he knows is he's two under a tree. Yes. So we want to keep him in. Um Active labor, I'm not sure. I haven't got an update on Lindsay. Um, they, mommy made it home. Everything went, finally got it. Finally, that baby came out. Uh, oh, praise cool. the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was just going to mention <laughs> that because Nani mentioned her. So, and boy, everybody. I believe it was a little boy. Oh. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> And she was on her way home from work tonight, but it was a short little ride in the ice. And the girls are at the window waiting for her. So we, I was like, go, 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 go get those babies. <laughs> Amen to that one. <laughs> but praise God. Uh, we want to keep Philip's daughter, Isabella, in prayer that she gets out of that cult of sophistry. We're going to keep Frank in prayer. Bonita, Angel, and her family, all of them come closer to God. Yes. <laughs> I did find out that Cracker's wife, um, <laughs> Jimmy, his name is Dusty, but he goes by Cracker. Um, his wife, Kimmy, she has a terminal illness. It is terminal. Um, but we want to keep her in prayer that if God can take her to take her peacefully and give him strength, that he doesn't lash out at God over it. <laughs> but we want to keep him in prayer. We want to keep Antonio in prayer that he continues in his walk with Christ. Like I said, Mama Bear, I did pray for her directly via text message the other night. Thank you, Grandma. I wanted to at least mention that. Um, daughter Riley, we want to keep her in prayer. Ken Murphy's daughter Riley, we want to keep her in prayer. Armando, Jasmine, Stephen, Ashley, Nicole, Bill, we want to keep them in prayer. Yes. Still, I haven't changed this list in over a month, and I probably won't. I'll keep adding to it. Mac, we want to keep Mac in prayer. He's been battling. He yes. just lost his uncle. This last week, he lost his uncle in a tragic excavator accident. Mm. So he is still battling that uh, loss of him. That's who got uh, Mac into um, excavators and heavy equipment. So... He has taken it kind of hard. He wasn't there when it happened. He is He's battling survivor's guilt. So I want you all to know that to keep him in prayer for that. Sure Matt, will. 
my brother Matthew, he's still in the hospital. Um, his wife Amanda's battling being the only one working right now while he's in the hospital. We want to keep Mark, Donnie, Lori in for cancer as well. Stone County Deputy Smith's family and the other officers that have just recently lost their life during um while in the line of duty. We want to keep him in prayer. Alan, we want to keep him in prayer. He did lose his wife, Linda. Scott, another one for liver failure. We want to keep Peggy in prayer. Billy for colon cancer. Joe Dunn and his wife. Carissa's Graham, Judy, Julie has COVID. We want to keep them in prayer. Cat to get sober. That's a big critical one. James and Gina. Dale's mama, who just passed. We're also praying for his family. <clears throat> Yvette, son's Elijah for salvation. Kimmy, who is battling blindness. That's Tabitha's daughter. We want to keep them in prayer. Jacob. We want to keep uh, Jacob, Tabby's other son, in prayer still. I haven't got a word on if he's doing better or not. We want to keep Isaac in prayer. We want to also keep little Abby in prayer. Candace and Saya. We want to keep Winnea in prayer. Uh, and Mary Beth R. I know she's battling medical issues. Do, did I miss any? Our Panther. Dawn. Whether she likes it or not. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dawn Kennedy. That's our Panther. <laughs> we did say her grandma. <laughs> Um, just recently, her brakes failed while she was going down a hill on ice. So wow. we want to keep her in prayer as well. If that ain't an attention getter, I don't know what is. That's what I was thinking. Um, every time we pray for her, something more is like, she's at the bottom. She's got to come up eventually. <laughs> um, I've had That's to what I too, but I keep wondering when that eventually is. Uh, well, trust me, you've been at the bottom for a long time and you're just now coming back up, Kayla. So, you We're going to pray you continue come back up. Yeah, because I'm telling you, you've been at the bottom for a long time. The hell you've been through, young lady. Yes. <clears throat> and I'll be the first to say it just like that. And I won't pull punches. If God <laughs> hasn't shown you yet, he's going to reveal more mightiness in you. <clears throat> yes. You are, and I'll be first one to tell you that. I've had no power steering since Sunday on my car. <clears throat> so trying to drive a four-wheel drive with no power steering is like trying to drive an old Mack truck. Oh, I feel you on that one. I've driven a couple different vehicles without power steering. One being my foster mom's four-wheel drive Durango. <laughs> I've got a little, older one. I've got a Nissan Pathfinder, and it's like driving a battleship without yep. power steering. <laughs> yeah. My lower arms are getting a good workout this week. <laughs> We're going to call you Popeye. Oh, I already worked <laughs> Popeye on the forearms. So it's just going to be super Popeye after this week. Because <laughs> I'm not going to tear into it until it's warm. As long as I can still drive it, I'm not going to tear into it. I <laughs> Just the way I am. If it's not stopping the vehicle from running or creating a safety issue, I'm not going to worry about it. But if I did, <laughs> if I wouldn't, if I wasn't aware of it and didn't want to steer, then it would probably scare me and then I'd go get it fixed. But <laughs> that car with 345,000 miles on it, it's, it's expected. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely that. <laughs> but God is good. And uh -huh. I definitely want to say God is good tonight. Because of everything going wrong, we are all here together. No matter who it is, we've all connected spiritually. And I was talking to somebody earlier today, and I told him, I said, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be who I am today. I would be dead in a ditch somewhere. If he can deliver me, he can deliver all of us. And that's why Paul's story and Paul's messages really ring deep in my heart before we get into prayer. This is why Paul's teachings are very near and dear to me because it shows a side of people that God restored when everything that they did was against God. 
and he restored him and called him to a higher calling. But he started that when he picked 12 outsiders that nobody wanted and made them disciples. And, and that's what God does. He picks the least expected and makes them who they are. And that goes for each and every one of us. I want you all to know that you're here for a purpose. <laughs> and it's not for my glory, not for an attaboy, but for his glory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, getting ready. I'm getting ready to do I was just grabbing my cup <laughs> Get him on crack. <laughs> he's cracking that whip <laughs> but it's for God's glory and I'm grateful that you're all here tonight and as we bow our, our heads in prayer please say some silent prayers and thankfulness for God doing, bringing you out of what you were in because even in the valley, he's carrying you. <laughs> Whether you're standing on top of the mountain or you're deep in the valley of hell, he's carrying you through it all. <clears throat> That's one thing I can be grateful of. Let me get another sip and then we'll, we'll bow our heads. Mm. Mm. I'm having to do a combination of cold and hot to get my throat clear. Mm. <clears throat> There we go. Now I got my big bottle of uh, liquid over here. So that should be enough for our Bible study tonight. <laughs> Let us go ahead and bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you. As we come together in your name, O oh Lord, in your studies tonight, in Lord, your holy word, not by private interpretation or by any means of ourselves, O oh God, but by your very word that we live. Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters who are battling medical infirmities of all manners of sickness and pestilences internally, Lord. We ask that your hand reach down in them and purify them and it be a testimony and a witness for you, O oh Lord. Not that they're mighty themselves because of nothing that they did on their own matters, but what you have done through them. Lord, we as come to you humbly right now, that if there be anything amiss in our life that you want us to remove, reveal it to us, O oh Lord. Give us strength to come out of whatever devices that we've got ourselves trapped in, whatever kind of belief system that's wrong and not of you, O oh God, that we can cast it aside and stand knowing that we are following you and you alone, O oh Lord. Lord, we ask you to deliver your children from the woods and the wilderness right now, Lord. Your lost sheep, call them to you right now, O oh Lord. Reach down in their life right now, Lord, and bring them out of the life that they're living right now, Lord. Deliver them. And Lord, our fur babies right now that are battling illnesses, your will be done in their lives, O oh Lord. Your will be done in their little bodies, O oh God. We want you to bless them as you bless all of us, O oh Lord. And Lord, bless our enemies. Bless those that curse us, Lord. Even though we may not like that, what they do to us, Lord, count not their sin against them. Deliver them as well to you, O Lord. Reveal your yeah. truth in them and bring them out of the world and call them so that we can call them brethren and sisters. Lord, we just thank you and praise you as we open your word, that it is your word and your word alone. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> but I believe we left off in 1 Corinthians 15 last week, um, last Saturday. So that's where we're going to pick up tonight. And I love, and like I said, I love the way that Paul worded things. There is no pride, no envy, no usury in any of his statements. And I've had people tell me that the Bible's a mystery. And because they took the word mystery out of context when God said that how, how would you understand the mysteries in my book word and they try to turn it into numerology and all these really crazy whacked out theories and I, I called it out somewhere online the other day 
I was like, I don't believe in new numbers and all this numerology because no man knows the day. And so I want you guys to be aware that that's going around again. It's not new. It's just been revamped that they're trying to get people's minds off of what they need to be studying and onto all these numbers games. And they're trying to point one person as the Antichrist when there's many Antichrists. <laughs> there we go. I just seen it pop up. <clears throat> hey, Chad. <clears throat> yeah. Can we get a real quick prayer for Kaylin right now? She's having kidney spasms in the interior right now. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you rebuke these spasms so that Kaylin can attend this tonight. Lord, let not Satan interrupt this meeting tonight, Lord. We just ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I don't mind praying and praying again. Exactly. Satan ain't got no place here. Nope. <laughs> but like I was saying, is this make sure what you're reading and what you're what people are talking about aligns with the word of God is what I was going to give you a heads up on. Because it's been heavy on Twitter lately. Where all these number of people are coming out saying, hey, this is lining up with <laughs> it's not. Bless you, whoever sneezed. <clears throat> Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain apostles, excuse me, repay, remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that I'm not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so ye believed. <clears throat> I know you guys have probably heard me say it a million times that I'm just a willing vessel. <clears throat> Paul was saying the same thing here. I am but a willing vessel. The most unworthy person God called to be a teacher. Paul is saying the same thing because I did the same thing Paul did. I persecuted the church in my sin. And unfortunately, all of us persecuted the church when we were living in sin. We mocked the Christians that were trying to lead us out of the world. There ain't a person alive that didn't make jokes and mock the Christians before you became a Christian. I don't care who you are. There's always a running joke somewhere, Bible thumping. Wing nuts is one of the favorite comments that we used to use when we were younger. But Paul said it wasn't his own message that he preached. And it isn't Paul's message. It ain't his words. It is the scripture. So as Christians, we have to remind ourselves to teach directly from the word of God. Try to create your own gospel. No reason for it. Because all tools are already written in 66 books. Now we continue. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain? And your faith is also vain. 
Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and became and become the first fruits of them that slept. Paul. I love Paul's way of wording things. It's fun. Because he's basically explaining that if Christ, if there was no such thing as resurrection, then everything that we do today is meaningless. Including preaching. Because we're still dead in our sin. That there is no remission of sin. Some are teaching that. That there's no such thing as resurrection and repentance and a Messiah. They're still to this day waiting for their Messiah to come. <clears throat> Even though they persecuted and crucified him. And he walked out of a tomb. It's a pretty scary rabbit hole right there to go into. But this is what society wants us to believe. <laughs> us that know Christ. Know that he rose from that grave. And he conquered death and hell. Our belief is not in vain. Because it says it right here. But now is Christ risen from the dead. And become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expect, accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are ye then baptized? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest your, by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. I love what Paul said there. We will be touching that in a second. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. <clears throat> How many have seen these churches? And they literally got gallons of wine all throughout the service. Now I've witnessed buildings like that. Now I've witnessed some things that would <laughs> make your blood boil under the guise of being Christian. It, it just, and this is where he's talking about let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. That was not done in honor of God. That was done in jest of God. 
and to mock God. This is where Paul warns us, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. We talk about discernment a lot. And I know I kind of harp on discernment, guys. But divine understanding of God's will. Discernment. <laughs> we must know the spirit by the spirit. Because there's going to be a lot that sound good. But their message sounds great. It hits you right in the feels. It makes you feel ashamed. <laughs> then it makes you feel happy. It better prick your heart to the point where you're so sick of what you've witnessed within yourself that you're willing to repent and turn away from it. You shouldn't be happy. It shouldn't be a happy occasion. It should be a somber humble occasion true repentance comes from within what was that uh caitlin finished the i scripture. remember some stuff back when i went to church on a regular basis caitlin finished your uh the sentence without she's it's getting her touche <laughs> But it's See, a, I told you her. <laughs> Touche. But exactly. We have to be. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? I love this comment. Thou fool, that which sowest, which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest. Thou sowest not that the body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies, bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There was one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven, as is heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit corruption. We're not going to get into astrology here. But what he's talking about is each thing that God has created has its own glory. Whether it be the sun, the moon, the stars. But it doesn't mean go create an altar and bow down and worship it. Stop worshiping the creation and worship the creator. Just I want to get that clear that this is not justifying worshiping of idols <laughs> I just I want to make that clear that's not what Paul was saying here each thing that God created has its own glory whether it be animal human celestial or earthly but it is the glory of God that he created it 
That is what Paul's talking about here. The last Adam is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Just so you know, the quickening spirit is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so I wanted to make that clear there so people didn't get it. Missing and understood it that they that Paul was calling Jesus the last Adam. And I've heard that too many times, and it's no, no, not even close. So I wanted you guys to make sure you understood that before we move on. So I like how Paul ends it. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So we know the flesh is corrupt, right? So if the flesh is corrupt, what is justified? The soul. Spirit. The spirit. Soul. Yeah. The spirit or the soul. It's exactly it. Because flesh cannot inherit in corruption. Because that's why if you look at Romans 3.23, it says, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. So that's why also you look at John 3, 16 through 21. What's the first part of it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. <laughs> so who inherited death and sin for us? Jesus Christ did. As a man. But when he came out of that tomb, he walked away in incorruption. Not as flesh, but as spirit. So I want you guys to understand that. That's why, yes, Jesus as a man, as a human, could not go back to God because it was sinful. But when he resurrected, he was no longer physical, but spiritual. spiritual. <laughs> but the difference is, is when Jesus came out of that tomb physically in both flesh and spirit, he left, but it was the spiritual incorruption from his sacrifice that allowed him to go back to heaven. Because some people talk about, <clears throat> bear with me a second, mm -hmm. got a drink, feel it creeping. Some people go, well, if Jesus took on sin, then how could he go back to heaven? <clears throat> And I have to explain it this way. Because Jesus was a man without sin to begin with. And he took on the sin of mankind. When he went down to hell, where do you think he left all that sin and corruption? In hell where it belonged. And he took the keys from death and hell. So they had no authority over him. So do you think that Jesus went back to heaven immediately? I 100% believe he went both physically and spiritually back to heaven. Uncorrupt. He is the only one that was ever justified when he walked out of that tomb. And that is the gift he gives us in the spirit. The remission of sins. <laughs> if I say something else ask me stop me immediately guys or if you don't understand what I'm talking about please stop me and question it <laughs> behold I shew you a mystery I was just talking about this <laughs> oh lord thank you lord behold I shew you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal, mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal have should have, uh, I can't even talk, shall have put on immor immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? 
the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through who? Our Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. I love confirmation when it hits. <clears throat> it's exactly what we were talking about here. Therefore, my beloved brethren, sorry about all the pop-ups <laughs> on my computer. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I love the reminder and the confirmation here in this last paragraph. We labor not in vain for the victory is the Lord's. We will put on incorruption. Our mortality will become immortality. Is it by our own merit or is it by the blood of Jesus Christ? Before we move to the next chapter, my last question. Is it by our own merit and strength or is it by the grace and blood of Jesus Christ? Can't work your way to heaven. I knew somebody was going to nail it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> faith without works is dead. Works without faith is dead. You still can't earn your way into heaven. The price was already paid. So, wow. <laughs> so you're 100% right there, Nani. I love it that you caught that. <laughs> so now we come to 16. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whosoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. And it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey with, whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. I'm going to say something here, guys. Did you see this, that offerings were only supposed to be taken once a month? Yeah. Well, why do we get a plate shoved in our face every week? Right. <laughs> Filthy lucre, right? Mammon. But should that money be given to the pastor to pay for his brand new car or Learjet? No. <clears throat> We've talked about almsgiving and tithing. And tithing and almsgiving was to do what? To take care of the widows, the homeless, and the poor, right? And the destitute. Huh. Oh, nobody is supposed to be profiting from the word of God. Nobody. But how many times do you see that plate shoved in your face every week? <laughs> Praise God, I don't do that. <laughs> I will not do that. There, And I kind of chuckle because I've been accused of it. <laughs> I don't want to get hung up on tithing right now. So we are going to move forward. But just remember, Paul had an order that he taught. and. So many people throw that up there that you're supposed to take hot rings. No, I tell people every day, as God has prospered you and you have the ability, go use that to minister somebody in your community. God knows what you're doing with that money. God sees it and that's all that should be seeing what you're doing. It's not up to me to decide how your money's dispensed on who you give alms to. Let the Spirit lead you to do that. 
I can, uh, Ellen can tell you of a big spiritual swack in the face when it comes to that. Yeah, literally. Amen. Amen. And that's why I tell people all the time. Why do you think that everything that we do is provided for you guys freely? Because it's not about, let me see how quick I can con somebody. Uh, it's just not in me to do that. So if it ain't in the word, I'm not going to teach it. <laughs> I've said that a thousand times. You guys already know. I'll get off my pedestal, off my soapbox now. <laughs> I got to get off that soapbox now. <laughs> because just like Paul, and I love this, what he says here, a great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. How many people talk down behind our backs? All oh, these so-and-so bigots. They tell us that Jesus is love, but then they tell us that God hates it's a homosexuality. <laughs> Listen to so-and-so self-righteous person. I'm not going to let him get a job here because he don't like sin. Nothing new under the sun. Jesus had enemies. Chap. Free disciple. Yes, Grandma. Take a drink. Kaylin said so. <laughs> She's hearing it. Uh-oh. <laughs> now I'm <laughs> <laughs> like mother, like daughter. Oh. <laughs> but if you are truly in Christ, your enemies are going to come at every angle. And they're going to come where you least expect it. A lot of them are smiling and shaking your hand and giving you a big hug every Sunday and every Saturday. Trust me, I've witnessed this more than once in my life. Paul had the same battle. <laughs> and so I don't get a church around pretty much anywhere around here. Oh, uh, going to an assembly hall isn't church. It's where two or more are gathered in Christ's name. There he is in the midst. That's church. <laughs> I get so mad at the word church being thrown around like that nowadays. And that's just a pet peeve of mine, Kalen. Sorry. <laughs> but I get what you're saying. <laughs> now, if Timothy has come, See that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in feet in peace, that he may come unto me. For I took him, took for him with the brethren, as touching our brother Apollos. I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. So Paul's telling them that Timothy will be along shortly in due time because Paul wants him to come. Do you think that Paul and uh, with how Paul instructed Timothy, do you think Timothy became just as strong as Paul did in the word and led accordingly? Just a question, guys. Uh, just a quick uh, kind of thought provoker here. If you, anybody has read t the first and second Timothy, would know that Timothy was just as mighty as Paul was in his teachings. And he was very devoted to Christ in the same manner that Paul was. <laughs> So I want you guys to be thinking of that. And that's why Paul commended Timothy as he did here. Now we come to 13. And I like this. Because I tell people all the time that we are not only to just be observers. We are to be watchers. So look right here at verse 13. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. <clears throat> Here we go again, <laughs> coughing again. 
Drinking. <laughs> Better. I did, ma'am. I did. <laughs> Wash yeah. and stand fast in the faith. <laughs> well, I'm getting it from two sides all of a sudden tonight. <laughs> Amen, Sister Sarah. Amen. Ugh. I like what he says here. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. But then he puts in this little sprinkle. And I love verse 14 for this reason. Let all your things be done with charity. We remember that the word charity means agape or immeasurable love. But I thought men are supposed to be these masculine, strong, mighty, authoritarians. Pardon me mocking this mindset for a minute. Because I got to laugh because it says quit you like men. And then tells you to <laughs> do all things in charity. <clears throat> I laugh because this is kind of like a polar opposite of the mentality of man being the king. And then all of a sudden it's do all things in charity. Be strong like men, but do everything in charity. And it's like, that's how do you balance this? And it's very simple. Refer to Christ as an example. You have authority over your flesh. You have the authority over the sin you commit. But how can you lead others into Christ if you yourself cannot manage and see the sin coming at you and turn away from it? This is what he means by quit you like men, be strong. But then when you approach a ministry opportunity, should you go over to that person and say, you need to repent. I'm going to do this for you only if you commit to Christ. Nope. Or is that usury? Usury. Yeah, that's usury. So this is where he says, quit you like men and be strong. But do it in immeasurable love. I love you this much to do this for you as the Spirit has commanded me to do so. <laughs> I want to invite you to come to know Jesus because he wants nothing more to, than you to have fellowship with him and to accept him as your personal Savior. But be aware that the enemy could be playing, playing you too. That is why we see it as quit you like men be strong. Be studied up. Be prepared. And sharpen that discernment iron. Because if you don't, you're going to get suckered into something that's going to cost you. Dearly. That is why when we read this, we understand that quit you like men be strong means don't yield and pan after somebody without knowing what kind of person they are. But still show them kindness and charity, agape love. If they can't do for themselves, help them to do for what they need. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. <laughs> it was very clear, but a lot of people go, well, it's a mystery. No, it's not. It's simple. <laughs> but then I like what he writes here in the next part, in 16. That ye submit yourselves unto such, and everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus, and of Achaicus. For that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. <laughs> That's amazing. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge ye them that are such. Remember, we were talking about diverse gifts last week. About some are stronger in helps. Some are stronger in prayer. Some are stronger in more than one gift. 
I know who to go to if I need prayer. I know who I need to go to that's willing to listen if I need an ear. Go get your sissy. <laughs> Therefore, acknowledge ye them that are such. He's not saying put them on a pedestal and put give them little trophies and show them off. Acknowledge, brother, I know, or brother, sister, I know you're strong in prayer. Can you help me with this situation? You okay? That is the acknowledgement that Paul is saying. Just go to the person you know is strong in a gift. That's what's crazy, isn't it? That you see this. And people think, oh, it means to put them on a pedestal. No, it just means to acknowledge them. Go to them that are powerful in prayer, powerful in teaching, powerful in understanding the spirit that you're facing. And I like how Paul closes it. The churches of Asia salute you. Achaia and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. All the brethren greet you, greet you one another with a holy kiss. The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. If any man love not the Lord, Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Okay, we got some big words here. <laughs> what does anathema mean? excommunicated yeah I was going to say it basically comes down to big trouble divine judgment is Maranatha <laughs> uh, an exclamation of the approaching divine judgment <laughs> and that's Chaldean by the way so let him be excommunicated with divine judgment that's a pretty powerful statement right there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. So if we teach contrary to the word of God, they are to be anathema, maranatha, excommunicated by divine judgment. But whose judgment are we supposed to use? Is our is our own self or is it the word of God that reveals the wickedness within them? So it's nothing by us. It's by the very word of God we can discern who is with God and who is contrary to the word. Am I hearing that correctly? I don't like to use harsh terms, but there's a time to cast someone away when they're teaching contrary to the word of God. So remember that. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Such a beautiful closing of these letters. These first letters to Corinthia. But everyone goes, well, didn't Paul have two letters to Corinthians? Yes, and we will be starting that on Saturday. <laughs> Just so, so Paul wasn't done with Corinth. <laughs> he was not done with Corinth yet. Much teaching that it too took two whole books. Yeah. To deal with one region. I could just imagine Paul when he's going back after Corinthia and he's going up to one of the leaders in those churches, pop them on the floor and say, you should have had a V8 because you didn't listen to me the first time. <laughs> I could literally see Paul doing that to somebody. <clears throat> For lack of a better word, guys. <laughs> Questions tonight, guys. Or anything else that you want to add? Can you imagine Paul writing letters to the United States right now? 
wolf. Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. I could just see him. I would have you not ignorant, President Biden. But you, the rumors that I'm hearing and I'm witnessing are pretty accurate, dude. <laughs> you got some explaining to do. <laughs> <laughs> Amen on that one, Sister Nani. Ooh. <laughs> I, I could just see that. It just wow. <laughs> I would say they would probably align pretty close to this first book of uh Corinthians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be honest with you, about fornicating and all that. Oh yes. Ooh. Paul didn't mince any words on this first chapter first book of Corinthia. I'll tell you that. And I don't think he's going to mince words on the next book. I don't think Paul ever minced words. Uh -uh. But who, who does that remind you of in, in the beginning? Who didn't pull punches and put it, put people in their place without shame or guilt? Jesus himself did the same thing. Could you imagine Jesus walking into the White House with whips and staves and start flipping tables and desks, <laughs> driving everybody out of there? <laughs> I would love to see that. I would. You founded this, the founding fathers founded this nation under my father in heaven. But yet you have made it a den of thieves and vipers. <laughs> I could just see Jesus doing that even. I could see Paul writing some very scolding letters to our, our government and even the people of America. Definitely. It's a good analogy, though, Nani. Thank you. I probably strayed from your thought on it, but 100%, sister. No. Anything else, guys? No. <laughs> Like I said, Nani nailed it right there. <laughs> Applying it to America today. <laughs> That's a definitely a should have had V8 moment. <laughs> All right, let us go ahead and pray, guys. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for this mighty word you've given us tonight, Lord. Let us stand therefore and watch. And like men, be sober and vigilant is the warriors in you, O Lord, that we see the times that we're in now, Lord, how dark they are, how wicked they are, how pestilences and all manners of illness are falling upon your children, O God. We pray, O Lord, that you deliver them from this oppressive spirit and these oppressive infirmities, Lord. Give them peace. Give them comfort tonight. As we learn your word, let it take seed and root in our hearts, O Lord, that we begin to change with every reading, that we begin to grow stronger and stronger in you and understand that we are more than just believers, that we are conquerors, O God. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Oh, let me go ahead and stop the recording. My discord went off. Ha <laughs> ha